25 minutes to 3 o'clock. Hello again. You're watching today on ENCA TV Channel 43 with me, Dan Moyane. Thank you for joining us. Now, technology has changed many facets of our lives in ways many would never have imagined. And today, the term 4IR is bandied about, signaling the role technology will play in every level of our lives. In fact, it's doing so right now. Telcom's Township Innovation Incubator is harnessing the ideas of young tech entrepreneurs in Soweto. The program nurtures tech-driven solutions to problems within the township. I'm joined now by Matebe Zuobo, who is the Telcom Future Makers Executive and one of the beneficiaries of this program in Soweto, Lisiho Ndlofu. Lisiho and Matebe, good afternoon. Welcome to today. Afternoon. Thank you, Dan. Thank you. Firstly, Thank you. just summarize for our viewers, what is Telcom Future Makers Township Innovation Incubator all about? All right. So the Telcom Future Makers Township Innovation Incubator is really about nurturing innovation in our townships and bridging the divide of innovation such that innovation becomes democratized and inclusive. Because, you know, in order to innovate, you need a whole lot of resources, right? And so targeting young people, we provide those resources so that we can walk the journey along with young people to help them innovate in the technology space. Okay, what kind of things do you provide? Just break it down for us. Okay, so the kind of support we provide is, firstly, we provide a way of working through your business um, through a structured innovation methodology that entails testing um, assumptions that entrepreneurs have about their products. So this would be a typical design thinking uh, methodology that is used by many, many corporates um, across the globe. Then secondly, what we do is we provide grant funding, uh, which is soft funding to enable entrepreneurs to be able to you know, set up their businesses. And I think it's about 100,000 rand actually worth of grant funding that we provide per entrepreneur. And then what is most important is that we provide software development services um, and we use our sister company BCX, the software development team, to be able to help entrepreneurs essentially develop products that they themselves would have not have access to because the cost of development is so high, um, especially in this space. What, what's the category of products we're talking about here? So we're talking about anything from platforms um, to and mainly apps, um, others, IoT devices mixed with a bit of software development. So it's all around technology. So it's all around And um, what does soft technology. funding look like? That 100,000, you mm. said it's soft funding. It is what soft funding. What does it funding. look like? So it's seed funding. And in fact, it's not seed funding, but it's just before seed funding. Um, and that is grant funding. So we, we actually think that in order to be able to um, start up a business, you probably need that grant funding right at the beginning. So a lot of uh, people um, you know, use friends, fools, and family members to get access to that, to that soft funding. But as you know, particularly in our townships, we don't have enough resources. Young people don't even have enough resources to have family, friends, and fools that have that kind of funding. And so we provide that, that kind of funding in, in the beginning. And it's a grant, eh? And it's a grant. It's a grant. Yeah. Okay. So, Lisejo, welcome. So you, you benefited from that 100K about a year ago when yeah. you started. What did you start? That's an interesting question. So essentially, my co-founder and I, we started Paul Tent in 2014. Um, at the time, we were actually self-taught programmers because there wasn't any way to be able to develop a product, as Mateva mentioned, due to the cost of you know, investment needed to start a business. Um, and we had seen in our neighborhood in Pinville, Soweto, that there's a lot of players that go undiscovered. You know, players older than us, we've seen them play before us. We've seen players who are peers also go undiscovered. So we were like, okay, what could we create to actually try and change that narrative? And obviously, as fans of football and technology, we then made Ball Talent. And Ball Talent is a platform that we've created to enable professional clubs to find youth talent for their teams. What is it called? Ball Talent. So Ball Talent. So it's yes. an app. It's an app. That yes. you developed, you and, yes. and your partner, you said. Yes, Simon Wachutla. Okay, and how has yes. it been going? Well, it's been a tough journey. It's been a long journey because really in the beginning, it was trying to create the product. And after releasing it in 2019, we then got a lot of feedback from big clubs. We've also spoken to Safa. And um, based off of that feedback is what we're going to be doing to create version 2, which is coming out in two months' time. Um, and with that, we'll be then looking yeah. to increase our impact. You know, one of the biggest challenges besides funding that you've mentioned as an example, the resources, is also access to market. For you sure. come up with a brilliant idea, and where do you take it to? How yeah. do you gain that access? It's yeah. part of your, you know, in your innovation incubator. Yeah. Also helps uh, uh, people like Lisiho in the townships to yeah. access yeah. possible markets. Yeah, for sure. Um, so our strategy is that 
when we recruit, we look for businesses that are in line with our value propositions internally. And so what that means is once um, you know, the incubatees are complete, we then introduce them to various uh, business units and departments within Telcom so that they can partner with them. Also, and you, Telcom also assists yeah, directly. Yeah, so we've actually done this for other startups that are part of our other programs, and we've done that successfully as well. Um, and so this would follow a similar path as well. Okay, and success looks like what for you, Lisiko, at the moment? <laughs> you said version two is on the way, yes. but you've been on this journey for about a year. Yeah. What does success look like for you as a young entrepreneur with your football talent app? Well, that's a, I love that question because, you know, from the outside, people would probably think that it would be like success and monetary, but I've learned from the journey that the people that I work with and learning from them also is really what's the biggest motivator for me because it helps us to all grow. Yeah, it's not about money, yeah. eh? But it is, but not everything. Not everything. Yeah. Okay. And, and being an entrepreneur can really be frustrating sometimes. I mean, you try this, you try that. People to take people to believe. Now, Telcom came on board. Uh, who else has been supporting you on this journey? You said you started yeah. uh, playing, as you said, yes. around 2014. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Who else so has been with you on this journey? From 2014, uh, it was really from the work between Simon and I. And then 2019, when we launched, we were also part of the Diageo program, where we were also a beneficiary from that uh, program. And we were able to then launch with our tournament at the time. Um, and from that point on, we've then got a lot of clubs that we've worked with, such as the Chiefs and Sundowns. And as I mentioned, we've also been consulting with Safa to see how can we assist them to you know, find new talent. Because when you look at Banyana Banyana, they have a lot of players that are actually under 24. And they want to do the same with the men's team as well. OK, and how was Safa's response? What did they say? Very positive. So what we're doing with them is actually working on a system that we can use internally with them to actually help them identify youth talent. Okay, yeah. and, and, and the issue of clubs, I mean, you, you said uh, you've got this app, and how do you capture the talent? I mean, Jomo Sono, the, the Jomo Sono used to go around f remote areas of South Africa and unearth that new football talent. How are you doing it? Exactly, it's a, it's, it's a big you know, challenge, and there's a lot of processes that go into that. So for us, really, it goes down to firstly identifying leagues, which are of good quality, and then seeing teams which you could spot there. And then after that, we do send our videographers to go to the location and record the games. And we register the players onto the platform where we take their data. And that's how we actually assist scouts to find talent. Oh, it's brilliant. So besides, this is one example of your beneficiaries. Definitely. What kind of other platforms are being created out there? Just give us Amazing. an example. Amazing. Just a few examples. I mean, um, one of our beneficiaries also created a um, medical drop-off um, app that allows easier chronic medication um, access to people who this are... This isn't so way to steal. This, is still, this still is still in, in the Township okay. Innovation okay. Incubator. Okay. Um, another beneficiary um, who is TPS created a manhole, solution for manholes, and we've seen how... Oof. Don't tell us that about devastating that. Devastating eh? The devastating story, story of Kylie um, to Magalda. That family is still... They're yeah. still looking for the six-year-old. Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, and really the idea was that we should be looking... We should be using um, entrepreneurship, innovation... Um, and youth talent to be able to solve for some of the critical um, Is it easy to issues. find the talent, the youth talent? Absolutely. They're Absolutely. All, they are yeah. everywhere. I mean, we had such a hard time yeah. uh, selecting. So Soweto was a pilot. We piloted um, in 2020 and we got over 100 applications Beautiful. from Soweto alone. And they went through a, a rigorous application process. And from the 100, we selected the top 11. Okay. How much have you the spent so far? How much? Okay, let me no, no, let me rephrase. <laughs> let me rephrase. Me. Otherwise, the telecom boss is going to be upset with me. <laughs> How much have you invested? For sure. This? That's a better For question, sure. I guess. So on an, uh, per annum, we look at about ten million rand of investment across the entire program, because yes. we've got partners that help us to run the program. We've got um, overseas companies that we work with, local partners that we work with. But a lot of that money goes into software development, yes. which is critical yeah. um, for expensive. some of the, yeah. and that is expensive, yes. and that yes. is quality software development that we offer. Now I'm asking how much because you said you you, you invest about hundred thousand per entrepreneur. Okay, in so it's 10, 10 million rand per annum on the entire program. Ten million rand per, okay. per annum. And is it going to be ongoing? Are you going to spread for it sure. out across? You've piloted in Soweto. Yeah. Where else next? Kwamashu, Mlazi, everywhere. Everywhere. It's and a virtual program. Let me not forget Mamelud and Karenko. Otherwise, the Tswane brothers would be very <laughs> upset with us. Yeah, it's everywhere, for real. So everywhere. this year we are launching nationally. Um, so applications open 22 July. 
it is a virtual incubator. So what that means is that um, people can connect anywhere remotely um, and access uh, the webinars. So 22 July, you're going to be reopening. We'll be reopening. So people must go to the Telcom website. Go to Telcom website, go to Future Makers, Future go to Makers. Telcom social media pages. Um, and yeah. yeah. Let's see, what does the future look like for you now? Okay, version two is on the way, you've told us. Yes. Off here. But what does the future look like? I mean, you're young, South African, this country is beset with problems. Unemployment among young people like yourself is at an all time high, and it looks like our government doesn't have a solution yet. But what does the future look like for you? Well, I think that with the support of you know, different companies and also public entities as well, um, we can actually then try and change the narrative, of course. And, you know, we look to try and create an environment where we can have more prosperity, especially in our own local communities, you know. Um, and that's what I would like to, to see. Yeah. So, uh, uh, Mateva was saying that uh, there's lots of people, young people like yourself, who've got ideas. What would your message be to them if they were watching this to say, okay, I've got this, what to do? Because it's tough sometimes you have an idea and to crystallize it and then after the conceptualization, to make it happen, you don't even know where to go. Yeah. It's very hard. At least you found out about future makers with Telcom. I think what I would say is you just can't stop, really, you know, um, because if you don't give up, it's going to happen eventually. Yeah. Yeah. So when is version two going to be coming out? In two months' time. In yeah. two months' time. Good yes. luck, and we wish you well, Lesiko, with that. I'm a football lover, so I'm pleased that the, the football app man came in with the <laughs> telecom future makers lady. Thank you very much, Matebe Zwobo. And, of course, Lesiko Ndrofu uh, from Pimbel in Soweto. And Lesiko is a beneficiary of Telcom's Township Incubator uh, Program. We appreciate your time, and we wish you well.